Welcome. This is the 27th of April. It's the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. Reminder that we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Be nice to each other. Topics that I've got on today's agenda, preparing for the June long-term support release, um, possibly other UI improvements. And if Jan, if Jan or Tim join us, um, UI improvements topic. Alex, to you, I guess a question would be, should we put localization as a possible topic here? Is that something that actually fit into UI UX meetings? I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, at some level, it certainly fits as part of the user experience because presenting to a user in native language is a much better experience than presenting in a language that's non-native. So maybe, maybe we optionally have it at the end if you're okay with it. And uh, we talk about it here just to briefly highlight it. Would you be okay with that? Yeah, for sure. Okay, great. Any other topics that need to be on the list? Okay, then let's let's address the topics we've got. So uh, LTS baseline selection, our our usual schedule would have been, the schedule would have selected uh, last Wednesday, the 20, that would be 20, the 20th. And hasn't been selected. Uh, Tim started an email thread proposing a selection to choose uh, 2.344 or 2.345. And, and I would, uh, so Mark's question was, can we wait one more week? That would be then a two week delay because there are a few, few things that were of concern for me in terms of open bugs. This is a good place where I'm open to others. I believe Alex, you asked a similar question that led that, that conversation. Any insights you want to give Alex in terms of your experience with most recent weeklies? I think the recommendation was yeah 2.344 that release actually contains quite a few regression releases from past weeklies and actually from past LTS lines which is back to 2.3 and at least I think 2.89 or something at least very very old in terms of LTS and 2.345 contains at least two or three regressions but these were uh minor ones on the UX regression dashboard. Actually, that's a, that's a good one. Maybe I should bring up the reg regression dashboard here because that's a place where this group should probably look to see are there things that that worry you as you look at this list. So here's the, this is an opportunity for us all to take take a moment, look at these descriptions and see if there are any, there were a few in the, in the mail message that I highlighted, for instance, this, this one right here worried me, broken sidebar icons, just because it was, it was a little surprised. This one is ongoing effort in multiple places, right? Alex, that's a, that's a, we've, there are several plugins that still need work to, to be ready to adapt to the SVG icon removal or SVG icon removal and replacement with better icons yeah i have started um google spreadsheet and dropped the link in the issue oh of good okay so, addressed, so this of plugins i have addressed this in one the past has, the ones are still has a link to the sheet yeah I right think there somewhere. excellent yeah. okay excellent oh very good okay so lists of plugins with with unreleased changes and unmerged changes and some of them highlighting okay there hasn't been a release of this thing since there was a, 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 a no real activity since 2012 yeah okay dead plugins or abandoned good okay yeah there are quite a lot of plugins which are i would say abandoned because they had no scm activity for at least five years on the default branch that's why they are listed on a separate sheet. Excellent. And everyone else is pretty much work in the progress or waiting to be released. Okay. And so 
So these, these look very promising then. Okay, so merged and released, this says 47 of them or 46 of them have, have already been updated. And then we've got another set of eight that it's been merged, just waiting for a plugin release and another 28 that it's not yet been merged, but the PR has been proposed. Good. Now this tab, the one with, with marked for deprecation, my assumption here is just as we did for, for the tables to divs, if something's deprecated, we're not going to attempt to bring it back because for example, we would have to fix a security vulnerability before it would be, dis be distributed again. It, it just doesn't make sense for us to say, oh, we must have a fix for something that's already vulnerable. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Alex, thanks for doing this. This, this looks, any questions from others or concerns on, on the icon, icon improvement project? Okay. Any others in this list that others may be concerned about? So the, let's see, the one that I was concerned about was in Google Groups. Let me go find the message. I have to see the list. Next LTS baseline. Yeah, so broken sidebar icons. Oh, oh, right, this one that I've had multiple requests for, and I've seen no no activity here. So I think this one may be one that it's this topmost one. The when you're when a build is queued but not yet started, the new the new icons give no indication of that, whereas the old ones did. And I've had at least two different cases where people said, "Hey, I, I like this. I need that. Can we have it back?" Now, Alex, in your experience, is that feasible with the current with the current technology, with the current stack, or is that something we're going to have to have a different icon or something else? Uh, if I remember, if I understood the issue correctly, I think it's about the computer icon no longer blinking if a computer is launching or something. So close. It's that the 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 arrow that shows. That the what, to start a job or not used to blink when it was when it was in queued but not yet started. So it was the, the the job itself would blink, not not the not the computer icon, but rather the the here. It's easiest if I show it in Jenkins. Is that everybody okay if I just bring up a Jenkins to show it? This icon right. Let's look at this one here. So the icon over here used to blink. Oh yeah, I think that used to be clock and clock to underscore animator chip or something. Right. Yeah. So so to, to me a technical question is is it is there a way to allow us to to have this highlight that something has queued but not started? I guess likely. I mean, the logic existed before it. We didn't get rid of it. We just got rid of the icon. So we okay. could likely spin up another icon for it. Oh, good. Okay. All right. So so I don't need to be concerned that there's a technical limitation. It's it's now a coding thing. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, good. Back to the back to the team. Are there other things on this list that are of a concern for you? I mean, I like that this is sorted by create date because anything prior to about March, about this row that I'm highlighting, is old enough for me to, to not consider it really a risk to the, to the June release, right? Okay, they are regressions. They are things that people have noted, but not, uh, not a concern given, given how old they are. We've lived with them for a nice long time. All right, then I, I think so. So, to to this group, are you okay with the idea that we continue asking and trying to persuade Tim that let's wait for 
either we take three, four, five, or one more, and we may still have some backports, or we wait another week and take three, four, six, the, the one that will be next Tuesday, and, and then proceed from there. Any, any concerns or objections to that idea? Vadek, you okay with that? No problem from my part. There is nothing related to security with the next LTS. So. All right, great. Okay. Anything else on the preparing for June LTS topic? Okay, next topic then was other UI improvements. And I think we had discussed this in depth last time, Vadek. Anything, I assume nothing's really changed there since then? Exactly, nothing changed. Okay, so, so no real topic since last session. All right, and since we don't have Jan and Tim here today, I'm, I'm not gonna, oh, well, I guess we've got the new login screen that we could show. Um, yeah, let's do at least a demonstration of something that has arrived. We have this place where we've got it. Let's see if it's up to date. Weekly.ci. I know you're not using it nearly enough, so you should be reminded that weekly.ci.jenkins.io is here. Oh, except it's got an, okay, log into Jenkins. Am I running the wrong version? Oh yes, it's one, it hasn't updated yet. Sorry. So I'll, I'll have to, after our conversation, if you want to see the new login page, I can bring it up. Uh, this one is still not updated to 2.345. So we just got a new login page with a, a slightly different layout. Next topic then, localization and crowd in enterprise. Alex, you you okay if I bring up crowdin.jenkins.io to highlight it and let you talk for a little bit? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, so thanks to the to the uh, infra team, we have this site now, and I've got to make it big enough to read. Is that is that readable? How about that size? There we yes. go. Okay, Alex, your topic. Yeah, crowd and enterprise. That is basically, I think, one of the major topics we spent the last docs office hours on. And it's basically, I mean, crowd is basically a more streamlined solution to work with translations, especially with and by people who are not necessarily familiar with Git based environments. Yeah, and this is our Jenkins instance, crowdin.jenkins. .io is sponsored by the Crowdin team and hosted by them. And we just have the CNAME record for it to have it under our domain. So for me, the, the brilliance of this solution, so Alex, are you okay if I, if I highlight some of the things that I think are, are really, really exciting about this? Yes. So I was just discussing with a French native speaker a few minutes ago. And his first experience in trying to contribute to Jenkins had been attempting to do some Jenkins translation into French and using Java property files and various edits and how to find those things. It was really complicated and a complete failure. Whereas here, when I want to contribute a translation, so, okay, this is what we envision is that each plugin and Jenkins core will eventually be in this list of open projects and someone who wants to contribute clicks one. And then they click things like, I want to work on Italian. And here are some messages that have been translated. Uh, here are some that still need to be translated. And I can very easily navigate through these. Let's, let's do one. And they let me, they offer suggestions for translations. They offer, and I don't know which of these actually to take. I think I want this one to stay in English. So, but this lets me do translations. And, and now that translation is now ready. It's been submitted, now I can switch 
and other people would take this role then of proofreading my proposed change. And after they've proofread it and said, yes, this was accepted, then a pull request is submitted to the plugin. And that pull request comes through my usual development process. So all I did as a native speaker was interact with this web page that gives me great suggestions. And I get to submit proposed improvements to the Jenkins translations. Alex, back to you now. I've, I've, I, I'm so tr so delighted by this experience. I, I just can't, I can't express how much I've enjoyed this thanks to Alex's work. Yeah, some point on background information, like Mark said, proofreading actually equals the role of a PR reviewer on GitHub. So basically nothing specific about this role here. Basically like any other maintainer or translator who is familiar with the language can approve these strings. And once they are approved, they end up as PR on a separate branch on your project on GitHub. Which you can actually just merge right away because you have approved these strings on Crowdin beforehand. And for me, the concept of a proofreader lets us also admit that there are times when, when the person who's finally merging would benefit by having a native language speaker who does the proofreading instead of me doing the proofreading as the maintainer. So Vadek, with your your comfort in, let's see, Vadek, I forget, is your native language French or German or? Please, please, French. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, Switzerland is a complicated country, right? You're, there are only four native, native languages in that country, right? So. Yeah, exactly. So, so the French translation process then becomes much better because it's, it's a UI focused on doing translations. I'm, I'm so pleased with this. And Alex, thank you so much for launching it. Uh, we will do a, we will, Alex and I will do an online meetup within the next week or two um, to highlight how this works. But for me, it's been, it's been delightful going through it. It's especially interesting in terms of UI when you don't have to care about all the encoding of the accent, especially in French, this kind of thing. It's just a pain to do the thing. And I don't even imagine the situation for people with Cyrillic alphabet. I have a Belarus people in my team. They try to do some translation and it was just yeah, not really nice. So. Right, or, or here the Chinese simplifies or, or Chinese traditional, right? Where you've got a multi-byte character and this web page is going to present in multi-byte multi -byte suggestions, right? And, and it, it's just going to do it. So, oops, this one didn't offer me any. Oh, maybe not. I've never done Chinese before. So we'll have to, we'll have to see what they've got. But- I don't think but we have translated the, any Chinese plugin before, hence our translation memories are pretty empty here. Right. That that was what I wanted. Anything else you'd like to highlight, Alex, on on the crowd in integration? Mm, I don't think so. Probably doing that on the online meetup then. All right, that covered all the topics I had for today. Any new topics that have come up since we started? Just one point concerning crowd in. Uh, what is the flow after the thing are approved? You are creating a pull request directly from the flow from the application. What is the, the process in a sense? Uh, you mean like what happened after you have approved these strings on Crowdin? Yeah. Yeah. The plugin Mark just showed is currently set up with a GitHub integration through GitHub Actions and runs cron based every 12 hours. So if you approve these strings, you get a PR every 12 hours based on this schedule. Obviously, you can change this just in the crowd. Uh, in the GitHub file to be something different. But yeah, this is the example you have experimented with in the past Docs Office sessions. So perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to hear in a sense, because if it was a direct commit to master, it could be a huge mess in terms of security. Uh, for the example, the permission that you are setting in that application are not necessarily the same as in the repository in GitHub. So we can have some. Uh, desync uh, at that point, but it's also because the translation are very dangerous in, in Jenkins. They are considered as trusted code most of the time. And we got some uh, huge issue in the past in terms of XSS 
because if you're able to include any payload inside the translation, it will impact everyone in a sense. So that's pretty interesting to see that uh, it's based on the pull request and nothing else. Right, and and so let's highlight just here's a specific example. So schedule build six days ago received a pull request from from let's see from GitHub Actions. The bot submitted a pull request that had these changes in it, and I had to review them and then decide to merge them. So it was it was it felt to me very similar to what i do with dependabot where i say i look at the change and i have to decide if i want it or not and if i don't want it i can close the pull request yeah so so i like the pull request workflow very much because it it insulates the develop it, it requires me as the maintainer to think about these translations but has the benefit that the submitter hasn't had to work through the formatting and the character encoding and et cetera, all in order to get their, their pull request submitted. And yes, notice non è un tempo di generazione valido, è has an accented character. <laughs> and my Italian is still embarrassingly poor. Yeah, just a note on authentication. Uh, the WordPress are currently using a personal access token generated by Crowden to use as secret in your workflow. Similar how to use how do you use uh, other secrets and workflows? It's basically nothing you expose anywhere. And that's similar, if I remember correctly, to the technique used by continuous delivery used by CD. Is that correct? Yes. Now, now there was another question, which was, how do we authenticate authenticate users uh, to crowd in as an application? And and I think there the recommendation from Tim was, let's just use GitHub, use GitHub, and what's the other? He cited an example. I think it was. A, a GitHub auth like we do somewhere else. Oh dear, where else? What's the other place? I forget. So in other words, let's avoid using, avoid Jenkins LDAP because we'd rather not manage a connection between Jenkins LDAP and the crowd in server. Yeah, based on the example, Tim, and I think it was Damien from the Infra team gave me it wouldn't be compatible out of the box anyway because Crowdin doesn't support LDAP but more SSO here, which our accounts.service isn't much compatible with anyway. But I think using OAuth2 from Google or GitHub, that's what we have enabled at the moment, would work out fine enough for the ordinary user. Great. Obviously, you can still sign in with an email and password if you want. But me, for example, I'm just using OAuth2 to sign in because that is far enough for me. Excellent. And Vadek, since we've got you here, is there anything we need to do to engage the security team in, in assessing how this is being done, et cetera? If we just use GitHub OAuth 2, I assume no issue for the security team, or do we need to do a review with you? As long as it's creating some pull requests, I will say I do not care at all. Okay. If you want to manage the username and things like this directly in the application, I don't care because the impact at the end will be through the pull request. So if a maintainer approve a change, you don't care where the change is coming from, in a sense. Great. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Any other, anything else on, on localization and crowd in enterprise? Thanks for the presentation. Yeah, all right. Well, and, and Alex, seriously, thank you very much. I, 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 I'll keep saying it, how delighted I am with how that feels. All right, I think we're set for today then. Uh, anything else that, uh, if not, oh, go ahead, Vadek. Just perhaps a question concerning the 
pull request 300 from uh, from me in the script security what do you expect in terms of uh, action at this point because that was a topic that was created or uh, uh, i think it was discussed for the first time uh, one month ago in the previous ux meeting uh, in two weeks ago uh, why it was coming there just to, to understand a bit the context I just brought it up because it had been on the agenda for an, an extended period, and that was the only reason I, I raised it. I don't see that we can just leave it as as is because I don't think we've brought it to resolution yet. How we want to do it, right? Jesse's Jesse's view is he just assume we make no enhancements to that page. Others' view is, hey, that's a, a good page to improve, and there's a lot that could be improved. Yeah, and just to be sure if there was any real need or things like that to move it forward right now in a sense. So thanks for the clarification. Great, thank you. Perhaps to set expectation, I do not plan to work on that aspect at all at the moment. So uh, do not right. expect me to have a status next time with uh, positive news, I will say. So, uh, well, and, and I, think, I think we can we can just drop it from the agenda. Yep. Because it's we've we've brought it to resolution to the point where it's 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 paused and it won't proceed forward until the the concerns are addressed. Exactly. Great. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Okay.